Good evening, we are on Wednesday the 14th of September 2022. It is 22.47pm. I'm going to be sharing with you the Bible in one year, day 140. And the readings will be taken from the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 11, chapter 12, Psalm 139, and a reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, continuing from verses 36 to the end of the chapter, verse 53. I'm just going to begin with a prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom his love commits me here, ever this night be at my side to light and guard, to rule and guide. Amen. Holy Michael Archangel, defend me in this day of battle. Be my safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, I humbly pray, and do thou, Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust down to hell Satan and all the wicked evil spirits who wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. A reading from the book of Samuel, to Samuel, chapter 11 and the title is David commits adultery with Bathsheba in the spring of the year the time when kings go forth to battle David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel and they ravaged the Ammonites and besieged Rabbah. But David remained at Jerusalem. It happened late one afternoon when David arose from his couch and was walking upon the roof of the king's house that he saw from the roof a woman bathing and the woman was very beautiful and David sent and inquired about the woman and one said is not this Bathsheba the daughter of Eliam the wife of Uriah the Hittite. So David sent messengers and took her, and she came to him, and he lay with her. Now she was purifying herself from her uncleanness. Then she returned to her house. And the woman conceived, and she sent and told David, I am with child. So David sent word to Joab, Send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. When Uriah came to him, David asked how Joab was doing and how the people fared and how the war prospered. Then David said to Uriah, Go down to your house and wash your feet. And Uriah went out of the king's house and there followed him a present from the king. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord and did not go down to his house. 
When they told David, Uriah did not go down to his house. David said to Uriah, Have you not come from a journey? Why did you not go down to your house? Uriah said to David, The ark and Israel and Judah dwell in booths, and my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are camping in the open field. Shall I then go to my house to eat and drink and to lie with my wife? As you live and as your soul lives, I will not do this thing. Then David said to Uriah, Remain here today also, and tomorrow I will let you depart. So Uriah remained in Jerusalem that day and the next, and David invited him, and he ate in his presence and drank, so that he made him drunk. And in the evening he went out to lie on his couch with the servants of his lord, but he did not go down to his house. The next title, David has Uriah killed. In the morning, David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. In the letter he wrote, Set Uriah in the forefront of the hardest fighting and then draw back from him that he may be struck down and die. And as Joab was besieging the city, he assigned Uriah to the place where he knew there were valiant men. And the men of the city came out and fought with Joab. And some of the servants of David among the people fell. Uriah the Hittite was slain also. Then Joab sent and told David all the news about the fighting. And he instructed the messenger, When you have finished telling all the news about the fighting to the king, then if the king's anger rises, and if he says to you, Why did you go so near the city to fight? Did you not know? that they would shoot from the wall? Who killed Abimelech, the son of Jerubah by Besh? Did not a woman cast an upper millstone upon him from the wall, so that he died at Thebes? Why did you go so near the wall? Then you shall say, Your servant Uriah, the Hittite, is dead also. So the messenger went and came and told David all that Joab had sent him to tell. The messenger said to David, The men gained an advantage over us and came out against us in the field, but we drove them back to the entrance of the gate. Then the archers shot at your servants from the wall. Some of the king's servants are dead. And your servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. David said to the messenger, Thus shall you say to Joab, Do not let this matter trouble you, for the sword devours now one and now another. Strengthen your attack upon the city and overthrow it and encourage him. When the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah her husband was dead, she made lamentation for her husband. And when the mourning was over, David sent and brought her to his house. And she became his wife and bore him a son. 
But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 12. And the heading is, Nathan condemns David. And the Lord sent Nathan to David. He came to him and said to him, There were two men in a certain city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had very many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing but one little ewe lamb which he had bought. And he brought it up, and it grew with him, and with his children. It used to eat of his morsel, and drink from his cup, and lie in his bosom. And it was like a daughter to him. Now there came a traveller to the rich man, and he was unwilling to take one of his own flock, or herd, to prepare for the wayfarer who had come to him. But he took the poor man's lamb and prepared it for the man who had come to him. Then David's anger was greatly kindled against the man and he said to Nathan, As the Lord lives, the man who has done this deserves to die. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold, because he did this thing, and because he had no pity. Nathan said to David, You are the man. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel, and I delivered you out of the hand of Saul and I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your bosom and gave you the house of Israel and of Judah and if this were too little I would add to you as much more. Why have you despised the word of the Lord? To do what is evil in his sight. You have smitten Uriah the Hittite with the sword and have taken his wife to be your wife and have slain him with the sword of the Ammonites. Now therefore... The sword shall never depart from your house. Excuse me a moment. Because you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against you out of your own house and I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbour and he shall lie with your wives in the sight of this son for you did it secretly. But I will do this thing before all Israel and before the son. David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, The Lord also has put away your sin. You shall not die. Nevertheless, because by this deed you have utterly scorned the Lord, the child that is born to you shall die. Then Nathan went to his house. The next title, Bathsheba's Child Dies. 
and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bore to David, and it became sick. David therefore besought God for the child, and David fasted and went in and lay all night upon the ground, and the elders of his house stood beside him to raise him from the ground. But he would not, nor did he eat food with them. On the seventh day the child died, and the servants of David feared to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spoke to him, and he did not listen to us. How then can we say to him, The child is dead? He may do himself some harm. But when David saw that his servants were whispering together, David perceived that the child was dead. And David said to him, his servants, Is the child dead? They said, He is dead. Then David arose from the earth and washed and anointed himself and changed his clothes. And he went into the house of the Lord and worshipped. He then went to his own house. And when he asked, they set food before him and he ate. Then his servant said to him, What is this thing that you have done? You fasted and wept for the child while it was alive. But when the child died, you arose and ate food. He said, While the child was still alive, I fasted and wept. For I said, Who knows whether the Lord will be gracious to me, that the child may live. But now he is dead. Why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he will not return to me. The next title, Solomon is born. Then David comforted his wife Bathsheba and went into her and lay with her and she bore a son and he called his name Solomon, and the Lord loved him, and sent a message to Nathan the prophet. So he called his name Jedidiah, because of the Lord. The next title, The Ammonites Crushed. Now Joab fought against Rabbah of the Ammonites and took the royal city. And Joab sent messengers to David and said, I have fought against Rabbah, moreover, I have taken the city of waters. Now then gather the rest of the people together and encamp against the city and take it lest I take the city, and it be called by my name. So David gathered all the people together and went to Rabbah and fought against it and took it. And he took the crown of their king from his head. The weight of it was a talent of gold, and in it was a precious stone, and it was placed on David's head. <clears throat> Excuse me. And he brought forth the spoil of the city, a very great amount. And he brought forth the people who were in it, and set them to labour with saws and iron picks and iron axes, and made them toil 
at the brick kilns. And thus he did to all the cities of the Ammonites. Then David and all the people returned to Jerusalem. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just going to turn and find Gospel of Luke, chapter 24. And then I need to read. Oh gosh, the page has been spoilt. Oh no, this is delicate paper. Oh, I have to read from verses 36 to 53. Oh, they're all spoilt. Oh, that's sad. I don't like when I spoil the Bible. The paper's so delicate. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke chapter 24. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus appears to his disciples. As they were saying this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and frightened and supposed they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questionings rise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit has not flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved, for joy and wondered, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it before them. Then he said to them, these are my words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures <coughs> Excuse me. And said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name to all nations. Beginning from Jerusalem, you are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. The next title, The Ascension of Jesus. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. 
and they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple blessing God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for listening. May God bless you and heal you. I'm sending you his peace in abundance. May you always be happy and joyful in the Lord. Thank you for your comments. I apologise for not um, doing the, the normal that I, I try to do daily. But I've got too much to do at the moment. And I'm also following everything to do with the Queen. And praying and watching like millions and millions of us here and probably all over the world and um, it is a one-off historic occasion because I'm too old to see any other um, monarch of this stature um, she's a one-off 70 years queen I mean Charles is only two years younger than me his birthday's November 1948 and I'm December 46 so there's just two years between us so neither of us know how long we've got on this planet so I think that her life was dedicated and God was her rock but I'm disappointed in the media they don't they don't talk about her faith but at the singing and the the honouring of her in the church services is just lovely, really beautiful, beautiful. She was a Christian queen. And yes, queen of the world, good example, especially for Jesus. I'm glad that everyone can see that she believed in Jesus Christ. That's so wonderful. May she rest in peace. Amen. Yes, God bless her. Thank you for your service, Mom. God bless. Rest in peace.